Hey Cafe Crew, Colin Smith here, and today I've got something really exciting for you. I'm going to do a review on the brand new Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. So we've got some cool stuff to look at. But before I do, this was my very first Wacom tablet, just to show you how far it's come. This was a ArtsPad 2, and you can see here this was back from the days when man lived in caves and used these kind of ports. So as you can see, things have come a long way from there. So let's move to the brand new one. I've actually just taken it out of the box and I've already unboxed it. You'll notice here that I also have a Intuos Pro Paper Edition Large. And in my next video, I'm actually gonna unbox that and show you everything. But to save you having to watch me tear everything out of the box here, I've got all the goodies right here. So let's start with what do you get? First of all, you get the tablet. And as you can see here, it's really quite slick. It's one flat, smooth surface. And I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. It's got some decent weight to it. It's actually made out of aluminum on the back. Um, so it actually feels quite nice. We've got the pen, of course. We've got the uh, Wacom Pen 2. And yes, the other pens do work on here, the previous edition. And we've got a new base, an entirely new base. And we're going to break that down in a sec. And then also what we've got is these little accessories, which we're going to jump into. So why don't we start with the tablet? So one of the things that's surprising is that it's USB-C, which is great. Now, as you can see, I've got all my dongles and everything for my um, new MacBook Pro here to make sure this is all connected. But guess what? Don't need it. This baby here works by default on Bluetooth. And from my tests here, I've noticed that the Bluetooth works really well. There's no lag or anything. Obviously, you want to have it plugged in while it's charging up. But then once it's fully charged, it'll just run on the Bluetooth. Now, one of the things to bear in mind is if it doesn't work right away, don't forget to update the firmware. And I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. What you want to do is just tap on here. Go into your Wacom settings here. And you'll see that this is set. You could also go under your preferences, but the very top button here will take you into your Wacom Desktop Center. And you'll see here Intuos Pro, no updates available. And I actually ran firmware updates on there uh, that were new since then. So the first thing you want to do is download the latest driver, then update the firmware and everything will work. So now it works and as you can see, it's touched. So let's talk about what's on the tablet. So on the end here, you're going to notice there's a couple of things. There's a couple of little switches on here. One of these is touch. You can actually just turn the little switch so you don't have to worry about it now being, uh, you know, pushing buttons on here to do it. Notice that the touch is on. And if we pull that across, now the touch is off. Then the other one, of course, is the on off. It's a nice little metal switch there where we can turn this on and off. And if you want to pair it with the Bluetooth, what you do is you just tap this button here and then that will actually start up the Bluetooth and then you can connect it to your computer or your device. So if we look at our tablet, we notice we have on the left hand side, we have our express keys. There's eight of them, just kind of similar to what we've had in the past. Then we have, of course, the touch ring here where we can tap here to see the different things that it's going to do. So we can go through the different things that we want the touch ring to do. So all these express keys and touch ring and everything are all programmable, just like they have been in the past. But the big thing really is, look at this new surface. It's really nice. And then when you grab the pen and you start to draw, this is where it feels really nice. Let's look at the base, for example. It's a different type of base here. Instead of that long uh, one we used to have, it's kind of, it's a nice kind of, it's quite weighty. And if you look at it, what you can actually do is you just press it down with the with your palm of your hand and then you can just kind of turn it and then when you open it notice all our nibs are in here so in the past they kind of stood up and you didn't really know what was on them but now you can see the nibs there you can see we've got an extra uh, different nibs and we can grab those and we can quickly put them in now to take this out instead of having to bite it out with your teeth one of the nice things you can do here is a little hole and you can just go and pull it like that it comes right out much easier than before. And of course you can change those other nibs. Got a little instruction card here. Shows you how to set it up. Uh, but then we've got some interesting things. One of them here is this little card and this has the different types. So if you look on it, it goes rough, standard, 
and smooth. So we've got a rough standard and smooth that actually says that on there. So you can actually put that down and you can feel what it would feel like to try these different types of surfaces. So if you want to add any of these surfaces to your tablet, you can actually try them out a little bit here and then order them and then you can place them on the top. The other thing we've got is these nice little rings. Let's just pull that off. And uh, what we can do is we can put different colors on our pen. So say for example, I want to put, I don't know, maybe I want to put some red on there. I can just pull the red off. See that little red band? Undo the front, pull that out, and just pop that in. And then you can just put that over the top there. And now I can identify this pen because it has a little red. I'm just gonna paint. Now, one of the things I'm noticing because this thing is over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. That's one of the big changes. 8,196, I believe. If I'm wrong, I'll change it in the annotation. So it just has this incredible feeling. But while I'm painting, I really can tell the difference with all these different levels. Look at the smooth gradients I'm able to create here just by gently painting over here to just add a little bit of shading. And then if I hit the X key and then I start painting with white, I can shade and just kind of build that up a little bit. And it just feels nice. Like I can just gently go on here. I don't have to rush. I can take my time. And it just, just feels good, just feels better. All right, so let's go and have a look at some of the settings in here with this uh, tablet. And you can see here, we can set up the pen. We can have it do different things. You can notice there's a ton of different things you can have it to do. Um, we've also got these on-screen controls. So, you know, if you wanted to do something like maybe you want to go into brush tools, we could do the uh, back button. Notice we've got a front and a back button here. So I'm going to have the front button set to a right click, the back button set to the brush tools. Well, what are those brush tools going to do? Oh, we can go to those easily enough. We just go to functions, go to on-screen controls, and there's our brush tools, and this is what we've got set right here. So, you know, we can change these to do different things. You know, you can put all kinds of keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that in there. But essentially what would happen is when we're working and we hit that back button, and we're right here in Photoshop, we hit that back button, there's our brush tools, and we can change our brush size up or down. We can change our layer blend mode like that. See, that's actually kind of useful and you can see how the blend modes changing there just by tapping on there and then when we're done we just grab our brush and we continue to work now we can move this around and uh, we can do different things with it there of course we can hit that little cog hit that little wrench there and that'll take us into our settings and we can change our settings there now notice one of the things in here it shows the battery level and that battery level will also be up here, so we can tap up there and we can see it's 100% full, so we've got a fully charged battery. So you can also put that in our taskbar. Let me close that down. So we can put that in there and we can also go to our preferences from up there. So what else have we got here? Well, we've got the touch. We've got many things we can do with the touch. We can do the touch options here. Let me, uh, just using my finger right now. And you can kind of control it here like you would a mouse a little bit, standard gestures. And here's a lot of the different types of gestures you can do to do different things. And you can see that. And you can even set up your own gestures. So, you know, if you want to tap with three fingers, you can bring up the radio menu. Or, see, there's a radio menu and that will give you other options to do there. Or, you know, you can choose here and you can see there's a lot of other things. We can bring up other controls that will do different things. And you can see, you know, we've got Photoshop shortcuts, Painter shortcuts, and there's a bunch of different things you can do here. So you can customize some of these gestures, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so here we are in our Express Keys. So why don't we, under Photoshop, let's choose the application. So here's the thing, we can add different applications in here and have these Express keys work differently just for the programs such as Photoshop or Lightroom working with. One of the things I love to do is set up different shortcuts for mail and for uh, Word and different things like that because you can actually use these for a number of different things. All right, so let's have a look. We're in Photoshop. Let's change this to a keyboard shortcut. So let's just choose a K 
keystroke. And then I'm going to do Command Shift Option E. And then what that does is it's going to create a composite layer on top or a stamp visible. So we're going to call this composite. And click OK. If I select these layers and then I just tap on that one button, boom. Notice what it does is it creates all those layers together in a flattened layer on top without flattening the layers underneath. A composite layer, stamp visible, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we got the touch ring. And you can see, you know, there's the toggle there in the middle. We can have it do different things. So you'll see there's four different options there. And each time you tap on there, it cycles through them. See there, it shows you scroll, zoom, cycle layers, brush size, rotate. So you could do these things or you can go in and you can change it and get it to do different things. You can do keystrokes. You can do all kinds of different things here without touch ring. And then, of course, the on-screen controls we've kind of already looked at a little bit. Anyway, without making this a full tutorial, because I do have lots of tutorials on the Wacom tablets here at Photoshop Cafe that are done by myself and by Wes Maggio. So we've actually been doing this title for over a decade together, so there's plenty of in-depth things on how to use the tablets there. What I really want to do here is just more of a review. And so, well, what do I think about this? So I got to tell you, it feels really nice. I like it. I like the way it works. I like the way it feels. I'm getting good results. It's giving me the sensitivity that I like when I'm working an image here that I just dodged and burned and stuff a little bit previously. So there's the before image. There's the after image. Uh, just playing around a little bit on this tablet. So um, overall, would I recommend it? <laughs> Without a doubt. This is great. Um, and I always do recommend the tablets because... You know, if there's one tool you want to get when you're working in Photoshop, you need to get a tablet um, because without a tablet, it's kind of like working with markers on paper, which works fine. Or, you know, a ballpoint pen, it's great. You can draw, you can do a lot of things, but there's no pressure sensitivity. You can't do shading. When you have a pressure sensitive tablet such as this, you can shade like you would draw with a pencil. So you can create gradients, you can do different things. And then when you're retouching your photographs or you're drawing or sketching, painting, digital coloring, it's essential. So really this is the tool you wanna to get. And so I would recommend this one without any reservation. It feels really nice. Um, I love the fact that it works wirelessly. The Bluetooth, there's no lag, there's no delay. Um, it works fantastic. Of course, you can plug it in if you want, but I, I like the fact I'm probably not going to plug it in. In fact, one of the things I hate about the new MacBook Pro is the touchpad. So I'm probably going to, um, so I'm probably going to disable the touchpad on here so I can actually type without messing it up and then I'll use this for navigating and it's actually going to solve one of the problems there. So I'm really digging this right now. So the next video I'm going to do is we're going to take this bad boy right here, the Wacom into his pro paper edition and we're going to crack this open and see what's in the box and check it out so hey guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you like this video become part of the cafe crew hit that subscribe button right now smash that like button and also add a comment what do you think are you using a wacom tablet right now are you impressed by this is this something you want um so anyway guys thanks for watching until next time i'll see you at the cafe